Shout out to the wounded warriors all down front here. Thanks for coming. I've done 197 shows in Iraq and Afghanistan in the last 10 years, and that's all free, never with a penny. A lot of people get paid to go do that job. I've never got one single penny, but the people who don't know me who want to get a headline and print me up and say, oh, right wing redneck uh, Republican over here, and those call, they're wrong, but they'll call you out like that. Huh. They'll say he's, get, he gets paid a lot of money to go do those shows. And they'll just blatantly say stuff like that. Tell me about some of the experiences that you've had uh, you know, flying into Baghdad. Early on in the, in the Baghdad theater, when you would come into Baghdad and land inside on, the, on, the, on Saddam Hussein International Airport, you would come out of Kuwait, you'd stay 30, 40,000 feet in the air until you got right over the top and you're in a prop plane like a C-130. So you're in a big cargo plane with 20 people on board and some of them USO, some of them military, and then my three or four guys that are gonna be doing the job, you know, doing working. And then you would just start this death spiral. And the first time you went, you know the movies where uh, you see a plane gonna crash and it makes that howling noise as it's whining to the ground, that background effect they always make? It's literally like that. You come over the top, and if you fly in low like a regular airplane, you're an easier target for a shoulder RPG or you know, some kind of shoulder-mounted missile. So they come here over the top high, and then they just do this freaking death spiral down. And, and it's just banking hard and going down, 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 and you can't see out because you're buckled into this cargo bag. And then it just smashes into the runway and just boom, you just hit. and. There's nothing subtle about it, and they lock the brakes up, and you get out. And then from, for that week while you're in that Iraq, you're on helicopters all week. They fly really low on helicopters because the higher you fly in a helicopter, the easier targets you are. So they fly low and fast, so they're, if you're going to try to catch the chopper coming by, it's going so fast and so low that it's, it's out of your range before you can get something on it. So it's two different things. You fly low in a helicopter, and you come in high in a plane, crazy stuff. You sit in areas where they say, hey, you need to have your bags out front at uh, 6 o'clock, eat breakfast, and we're rolling to the, to the airplane at 7 o'clock. And you get out there and you sit an hour on the plane, you go, what's going on? And they go, well, they're launching mortars at the end of the base in the runway, and we can't go till the troops get them clear them till the boys go out and get, a, get the bad guys cleared out. You know, like, and then, then they say, okay, now there's six planes in line. We're going to move you guys to the front because you're dignitaries and we need to get you to this show for the butt boys. Now you're going to be the first one to take off the jet after they think, after you're thinking, you hope, I hope they got that cleared, you know. So you just go through a lot of that. But after three or four years of doing it, they're so good at their job. You start trusting them and you just relax and you go, you know what, maybe this ain't my day to die. What was the most harrowing experience you had over there? The scaredest I ever was was about a 41-mile convoy. We always take choppers, and we didn't that time. We took uh, five uh, Humvees with 50 cows and went out to Abu Ghraib prison. And all the way out there, the guardrails are blown up, and there's holes and stuff where stuff's blown up all the way. And you're sitting, sitting there on the road rolling, and everybody you pass, you're just thinking, is this one going to blow or is that one going to blow? So, yeah, it's, you know, that kind of stuff. But there's no way, if you look at it, there's no way they're going to take us outside Camp Victory and roll us out across open Baghdad outside the green zone for 41 miles if they don't feel pretty confident that we're going to be okay. Sure, sure. You know what I mean? I hope they get a lot out of it when we show up and represent our country and let them know we appreciate the job they're doing. But I get more out of it because my father was a soldier, so I get to, I get to uh, honor my father every time I go.